Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG. Today I'm bringing you the review for Firewatch, the Team Campo created title for the PS4 and PC that has you playing the part of Henry, a man with a lonesome soul who decides that maybe a job out in the wilderness fighting off Lyme disease will help him with the decisions and relationships that he battles with in the normal world. So let's see if Henry's plan works to put his trusty pack on his back and run away from his problems, or does he end up running into new ones? Let's see, shall we? As always, if you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Firewatch, given Forest Fire's dirty names, Park Firewatcher Justice, and possibly the two biggest power drinkers in teenage girl form you will ever see. Graphics are up first. One thing that's hard to deny is that Firewatch looks the part of a title wanting to present itself in an incredibly unique manner. Flat shaded vistas with almost blocky geography are wrapped with a detailed shading and lighting engine that enjoys basking the world in golds and oranges come dawn and deep blues and dark greens at dusk. In fact, it's the use of these color spectrums that set the emotional pace of Firewatch from the very start, and subtle color shifts can and do impart an almost subconscious additional layer to anything occurring either spoken or silently observed. But more interestingly, it's a gameplay addition when you use it to notice things that are amiss, like a strange red radio in your path or the silhouettes of fireworks just poised to set the entire forest ablaze. The art style is absolutely unique, and though it may not be for everyone, it was for me. Now, technically it runs fairly well, and I have an i7-5820 and a GTX 980, and I was getting about 60 frames per second at 1440p, except for momentary changes, especially when draw distance changed from short to long, and then it would end up settling out again. I really can't say that Firewatch is the most beautiful game in the world, but what you experience when hiking through the bottom of a deep ravine or staring out at a crystal lake is mesmerizing in its majesty, and certainly something to be discussed. Sound, music, and voice. Um, so it's uh, just the outhouse then, in terms of going to the bathroom? You're a man, Henry. You can go wherever you want. Well, number one at least. And uh, full disclosure, I pee wherever I want as well. It was with this guy, Javier. Ugh, he's incredible, caring, sexy as hell. He was a driller down in Casper. We dated for almost five years. I was working. Well, you're probably already on your way. Be safe. Now, of course, sound is up first in this trilogy of Audio Awesome. It's excellent. Most of it's ambient, and though Henry occasionally uses tools, the game is far more about exploring and experiencing than it is action-packed and altering, resulting in a sound spectrum that is absolutely heavy on ambient sounds, forest creatures, wind whipping through a rocky crevasse, or that little crackle of a campfire being snuffed out by Henry's angry boot. Much of the sound within this game is coming outside going inward. Very, very little is from Henry going outward. It's surprising in this day and age when you would assume that's the same for all games, but really, when you look at it, it's not. In many ways, Henry's like a ghost making very little sonic impact anywhere around him. Excellent use of sound. Music. There's barely any. Very occasionally little snippets of music play to alert the gamer to an important or poignant part of the gameplay. But other than that, the music is within the sound sphere of the ambient world around you and not in any orchestrated creation. What plays is okay when it does, but frankly, it's almost not ever playing music. And that brings us to voice. It's excellent. Henry is out in the woods working and has to deal with Delilah, another fire watcher, and their complex interactions and social dance is both an experience to behold, but a true indication that good natural content can be written for video game characters to discuss. Emotions are subtle but present, and it's the lack of seeing these characters engage one another. It's engaging, emotional, and resonant with choice. Now, there's a subtle pause and reaction and action, too, to their back and forth of the two characters, from a learning period to a knowing period to a caring period, and perhaps even beyond that. It's not rushed, nor is it dull, and in all honesty, it's some of the best writing ever in a narrative-driven tale. Excellent voice. And that brings us to gameplay. You play as Henry, who, as I said, has just chosen to take a job as a fire watcher, and within a short period of time, you're hiking around the woods doing various odd jobs that lead you to the first actual gameplay, which is trying to figure out what jackass is out there shooting bottle rockets into the sky in the middle of the fire season. And that's when you meet two of the most obnoxiously mouthed drunkard chicks to ever exist in a video game, throwing their trash around the park, lighting fires, and basically just continually being horses' asses, leaving a trail of tears-sized path of beer cans behind them. And that's just the beginning of things. However, 
You then spend the rest of the time grabbing supplies, looking for firefighters, discovering fantastic vistas, unlocking lockboxes, and taking pictures of the beauty of nature. And there's a little bit of a dissonance that begins even from the starting. It feels just a little bit like the story starts and stops just once or twice. Now, when it comes to puzzles, think the word none, and you'd be pretty right. Basically, it's the vanishing of Ethan Carter without homicidal ghosts or puzzles. And yeah, there really is none. In fact, at times, I'd be honest to say it felt a little bit like they had puzzles planned, especially with how you engage with items. And it feels like there's something a little bit at the tip of the gaming tongue here that never gets said. Instead, for the most part, you traipse across this landscape, uncovering the narrative of time spent between two people. That's really all Firewatch is about. It's crouched in a story of loss, but make no mistake about it, it's far more about learning to expand as a person and how to handle what is in the end guilt. Without going into spoiler territory, I can say that this is some excellently complex stuff, especially in the first act. Unfortunately, if I say first act, then there has to be a second act, because that's how math works, and the second act starts, and then frankly falls apart. What was originally a sedate but thoroughly enjoyable exploration of how people deal with problems with friends around them fell into some kind of odd forced mystery that was incredibly lame in its payoff. Much of the subtlety of the first act is hammered into absolute nothingness in the second. It's one of those times when you end up beating the game and you're like, there has to be something after the credits, right? I mean, it can't be over, is it? Oh no, it's actually over. That's what's sad here is that this game with this kind of narrative, which is slow to boil and lengthy in its pacing, requires either spot on storytelling or gameplay to prop up anything that falls to the wayside, like slower moments or giving the player a pacing reset so that it's not all emotional lows or emotional highs. Sadly, about three-fourths of the way through this, things start to go a little wrong. Especially in the light of the fairly shallow gameplay offerings, you have this really unique world and these unique people, I just felt that it could have been wrapped up much, much better. Fun factor. Listen, the first half was awesome. Uh, Three-fourths into it, I was slowly getting worried. and the last one-fourth of it, I was basically staring at my screen wondering what just happened. It's not terrible. It just loses its way right at the end. And in a game like this, when the story loses, so too does fun factor. As always, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale, and this is a buy. You know, this is where price can help a game tremendously. It's priced correctly at less than 20 bucks, and for that, the slow meandering bits, though unfortunate, do not detract from the feeling you get from experiencing the excellent parts. It's not perfect, and it's sadly not the classic game that many may have expected, but it's a capable game in a unique world, handling unique aspects of the human relationship and condition. And for the most part, it's delivered with style. Okay. So as I always say, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, maybe share it on Twitter, maybe check out our patron, whatever. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. And as always, peace out. Uh, I'll chalk that up to you being tired and grumpy. Well, I'd better get some sleep then.